Hey there students, my name is Nathan and I'm a Chegg tutor. Today we're going to be talking about different types of dividends and how to record them. Now what is a dividend? Well, in my own words, I consider a dividend like a bonus that's given to the owners of a corporation. Now another name for owners of a corporation is shareholders. So companies, they distribute what they call shares of stock, which you can see as little pieces of ownership of that company. So if you buy a share of stock in a company, you own a very little piece of that corporation. So when you buy it, the company records cash and you can record an investment on your end. So their equity goes up every time that they issue a share of stock. Now those shareholders are occasionally rewarded either every year, every quarter, it just depends on the corporation. They're rewarded with, with what they call a dividend. It's like a little bonus. Basically they're saying thank you for investing in our corporation. Here's a little bonus for you. So that's kind of like what a dividend is. So on the left side here we're going to talk about the three main types of dividends. There's a few others, but these are the three primary types that you'll see. First is going to be your cash dividend. And that's what it sounds like. They distribute out cash either every quarter or every year. It just depends on how often they do it. And that's as simple as multiplying the number of shares that are outstanding. So how many shares are that are in the hands of the shareholders at this time? times the per share cash amount. Now that cash amount is set by the corporation. It just depends. So that's a cash dividend. There's also something called a small stock dividend. So they say under 20 to 25 percent of the shares that are outstanding. Once again the shares that are outstanding are is actually what's being held by the shareholders. How many shares are out there at this point? So you multiply the number of shares outstanding times the market price per share, so whatever the shares are being traded at right now on the market, times the stock dividend percentage. And again, that'll, that'll be under 20 to 25% for a small, small stock dividend. Now there's also a large stock dividend, so that's over 25%. Same thing, but you multiply the shares outstanding by the par value per share times the stock dividend percentage. So it's a little different. Market price for small stock dividend and par value for a large stock dividend. Now those are the three different types of dividends. There's also three really important dates that we need to go over. First, the declaration date. So that's when the corporation, pretty much they announce that they're gonna go ahead and distribute a dividend. At that time, you're gonna go ahead and record the payable for that dividend, what you owe. Now that's gonna vary based on the type of dividend, what you need to record. So at this point, just think about, you're gonna record the payable, what you will owe to those shareholders. The second date is called your record date. There's actually no entry on this date. All you're doing is just going over the list of the shareholders that you will distribute the dividend to. So no entry at the record date. Then you have the payment date. So when you actually pay out the cash dividend or you distribute the stock dividend. Those are the three main dates. Now I know it's a lot of information right now, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and practice a problem with you and we're gonna pair it with these concepts on the left and it'll make a lot more sense. So, let's take a look here. During 2015, LifeWorks Inc. decided to issue a dividend to their shareholders. There are currently 5,000 shares outstanding, par values $5 a share, and stock is currently being traded on the market for $25 a share. So the following are independent scenarios. We're going to go over each different type of dividend so you can see how you record it. So, on the first scenario, LifeWorks will distribute a cash dividend at $2 a share outstanding. So record the declaration and the payment of the dividend. So on the declaration date, you'll go and record a debit. Now it depends on your teacher, but 
you can either record a debit to retained earnings or a debit to dividends. They both have the same effect because what you're, when you're debiting retained earnings, you're reducing it because that's where dividends are distributed from, is from your retained earnings. So you can debit retained earnings or you can debit dividends. Dividends is also a reduction to retained earnings. So they have the same effect. So we'll go ahead and record a debit to retained earnings here, showing that retained earnings is going down. Then we'll go ahead and credit a dividend pay it, saying that you will pay it later on. Now we gotta figure out how much. So for this cash dividend, it's $2 per share. There's 5,000 shares outstanding, so 5,000 times two. So that'll be $10,000. Same thing for the payable. Now on the payment date, let's take a look. You're gonna go ahead and record the payment of this dividend. So if you're paying it, you're gonna go ahead and debit out your dividend payable, showing that you have now paid this dividend for the 10,000. And you're gonna go ahead and credit cash, because it's a cash dividend. So that's fairly straightforward for a cash dividend. Now for a stock dividend, let's take a look at scenario two. So now they're gonna distribute in an independent scenario a 15% stock dividend. So that's considered a small stock dividend as you see over here. So you're gonna multiply the number of shares outstanding times the market price per share times the stock dividend percentage to figure out the amount of the dividend. So, let's go ahead and do that. First, you're gonna debit retained earnings for that amount. Once again, it's the shares outstanding times the market price per share times the dividend percentage. So know it's 15%, so we'll start there. 15% dividend, market price we said was 25 bucks a share, right up here. Then, you're gonna multiply that times the share is outstanding. And that'll get your number there. Eighteen thousand seven fifty. Now that's what you debit for retained earnings here, but you are not gonna go ahead and credit that. It's gonna be something a little different. First you're gonna go ahead and credit on the declaration date, once again. So this is the declaration date. Let me write this here. You're gonna credit what they call common stock distributable. So what you're saying there is that I will issue those common stock shares at some point. It is distributable. Not distributed, not yet. It will be distributed in the future. That's what that means. And that's actually going to be an addition to your equity. Notice we credited it here. So it's adding to your equity for the same amount. Now though, on the payment date or the distribution date is what they call it, it's a little bit different. You're going to go and debit common stock distributable, showing that you have now distributed it. And you're getting rid of that distributable. Then you're going to credit common stock, but you're crediting it for the par value. Like you're issuing stock, you always credit the common stock for the par value, always. So the par value we said was $5 a share times 5,000 shares times 0.15 for the 15% percentage. So 37.50 there. And what's left? Well, debits have to equal credits. So we're going to credit additional paid in capital. So that means the excess amount of market over par. So market minus par times the shares. That's additional paid in capital. So you would do 15% for the dividend percentage times the number of shares times 5,000 let me try that again, 0.15 times 5,000 
times 25, which is your market price. We got that number already. But then we're just going to subtract out the 3750. And that's what's left over, which is $15,000. So that's how you record the distribution of a small stock dividend. Now, moving down here, let's do a large stock dividend. So, declaration of a large stock dividend. You can do the same thing. You debit retained earnings to show that you are reducing your retained earnings for that dividend. And it's going to be, and I'll put my work up here so you can see it, 15% times 5,000 shares times the $25 per share. And I'll do the same thing here. 15% times, but here it's going to be the par value. So only 5 bucks a share times 5,000 shares. Thirty-seven fifty. So you've seen that before. Up oh, one sec. Looks like we're supposed to do fifty percent. Sorry, I was using fifteen percent. Let me re reverse that out here. So I was using the fifteen percent from the small stock dividend. Since it's a large stock dividend, we should use the fifty percent. Is what you're, what they're indicating here. So let me redo that. So fifty percent times five times 5,000. So it's actually 12,500. And you're gonna go ahead and credit the same thing as you did before. Common stock distributable, showing that you will distribute it at some point. Then on the distribution date, you will debit the common stock distributable showing that you're getting rid of it because you now have distributed it to your shareholders for that same amount. And since we're just using the par value here, you're gonna credit common stock. So you're not using the market value, so there will no, not be any type of additional paid in capital. It's not included. So same idea, 50% times the $5 per share times the 5,000 shares and you get 12,500. That's it, so that's the main differences there between the three types of primary dividends that you'll see. Cash dividend, small stock dividend, and large stock dividend. Now there's other terms in there that I didn't go over too much, like par value, market value, shares outstanding. Later on we'll do another video on equity, which that goes into more of equity as far as shares outstanding, treasury shares, that kind of thing. This video is mainly about dividends. Hopefully that was helpful for you all today. I know that's a lot of stuff, so feel free to go and rewind and fast forward through this video. And once again, my name is Nathan. I'm a Chegg tutor on Chegg.com. So you can find me here at this link. I go by Nathan G. Feel free to message me for some homework help, one-on-one -on -one tutoring or exam prep. Just send me a message and I'd be happy to help you out. Once again, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.